How's it going everyone? This is HDGW2, my name is Rapsack. And this is Oreo here. And today we're doing a video about the char starting area and character creation. So many of you have seen this screen and, and had a look at the, the races and the sort of the um, character creation. We're going to go ahead and create some chars here. Myself and Oriole are going to be both playing chars. I'll be playing a guardian, I believe. What are you playing? I'm going to be playing a uh, ranger. All right, so a basically ranger, yeah. ranger. Nice. So uh, you guys have probably seen this before. You know, it's it's pretty basic stuff. You get to choose how you look. Um, you get to choose your fur, since you're a char rather than your hair color, your physique, that kind of thing. It's, I think it's important to choose the right hairstyle when you're making characters. <laughs> well, yeah, as a child, you don't really get a hairstyle. You get more of a... Um, Fur pattern. Yeah, like a, a main <laughs> style or something like that. Yep. There's a couple oh to choose God. from. Oh, my God. Look at the detail that you can go into when you create these characters. You can yeah, choose I mean, eye width, iris size. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Let's have a look at that. Eye angle. Eye, eye squint. squint. <laughs> nice. Anyway, I'm pretty sure these guys don't want to see all this kind of stuff. So all right, let's, let's get moving. We're going to get moving. So we're going to go next. Um, you get to choose a couple of things like, um, you know, as, as a guardian, you get to choose your symbol of dedication. Um, perhaps, you know, you want to choose your character's backstory. You can make him, um, you know, like a charmer, um, someone with a lot of dignity, ferocity. Um, you get to choose what warband you're from as a char. So we're going to choose the... Or Blood Legion, I guess, and you get to choose sort of like a bit of your backstory. It's it's kind of standard stuff, but it's it's pretty cool. You know, you can sort of give your character a bit more, you know, character essentially. So um, we're gonna go ahead and make some characters as we go through here. Um, we'll go through a bit of a sort of a cutscene sort of thing. Oops. You guys can um, watch this all in, this world, in your own time if you like. I think we'll just skip through this. Basically, it gives you a bit of a backstory. It kind of links into Guild Wars 1. Um, there was kind of a, a, a Char Legion which was marching and um, taking back some land that they used to own. And then the humans, sort of, um, the human king sort of got cowardly and, and turned his, armor, his ar army into ghosts and then basically fought back the Char but cursed the humans forever. So these days the Char are still having to deal with this kind of crap, like they've still got all these ghosts on their hands, but yeah, we're gonna gonna play through it right now and, and show you guys what it's like. Alright. Hey. So so what do you reckon, Oriel? Well, look, I, I think I think personally I think the Char is pretty cool. I think it's the coolest character at the moment. But yeah. um I think we're still looking forward to seeing the Osora. Yeah, that's Savari. true. At the moment, the uh, Asura and the Silvari are not playable because uh, I think they want to keep something special for when the game releases or something like that. You know, they don't want to just give it all away too so, early. So what's this here? He's got a little green green star on his head. So like yeah, that. like if you played Gears One, you'd you'd recognize that green star as being like a quest. So um, you can just chat to him and grab that off him real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we're fighting our way to the front. There's a lot of uh, ghosts in the way. So, so what weapons do you start off with when you create characters? Um, usually you're going to start off with sort of one a one-handed weapon. Many of you will know that you get weapon, you get your skills depending on your main and off-hand weapons, or if you have a two-handed weapon. Um, only thing is uh, you start off with one main hand weapon, so you actually haven't got skills in slots four and five. But you do have to unlock it. Um, as you can see down the bottom, I've only got one skill available here, number one. Um, and I'm soon about to get number two, which is going to be my symbol of wrath. Here we go, chat to one of the guys. He's not having a good time. He's lying on the ground. But, um, yeah, so a bit of a lying down conversation here. Let us know what's up. A oh, another cutscene. That's right. These, these chat dialogue things are pretty cool. I, uh, I like them so far. Um, it's a little bit more interesting. It's good to have some voice actors in a game. Mm. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and skip that. You guys can watch that later if you like. I can shoot a motor with this. A mortar. A mortar, sorry. Yeah, another thing, another another cool thing in this game, we got siege weapons. Um, you do get bigger ones in this, but uh, a lot of the um, actual weapons in the game are, are required. Well, a lot of the sort of the world versus world and things like that require you to actually use siege weapons to break <laughs> down doors and things like that. 
you know, I think I said in another video you can sort of break down the doors, um, you know, manually with arrows if you like, but uh, it's going to take a while if you want to do that. So we're just making our way down here. <clears throat> and we're going to, excuse me, we're going down to the sort of little crypt thing down here and I'm going to go sort these ghosts out. So I guess you can see on the map, you can kind of follow the little stars around. So they just show you where to go. Yeah, this, this little map down in the bottom corner here is quite helpful. There you are, Oriole. I can see you. Chopping things with an axe. Yep. So I've now unlocked my symbol of wrath. Give me a little, uh, little, I believe it's a self buff and a little bit of damage to enemies around me. It's actually actually a skill um, in Guild Wars 1 that they've sort of appropriated. So the cool thing is you can see that all these people around here are actually other players with us. And they're, um, well, most of them anyway. And they're sort of pushing their way down into the, the crypt. So would you be able to explain if this is actually part of the world or is this a separate map to the rest of the world? Or? Well, we're actually we're actually in the actual world right now. If you go to the map, you can zoom out and you can actually got the entire map here right now. Um, although because this is the sort of the starting scene, I believe we're sort of locked into this area and we can't get out of it for now. Yeah, so sort of instanced into the map at the moment. Yeah, we're sort of instanced, but uh, after that we'll be able to just uh, um, walk around this area freely as we wish um, when we get going with it. So anyway, we're down in here. More ghosts, more fun stuff. Gosh, a lot of ghosts down here. And um, if you guys ever play this when the Bay Weekend sort of comes out, everyone's starting at the same time and there's just like a an entire swarm of players that have just started playing. Yeah, it's going to be a bit crazy. Unfortunately, we're not right in the middle of the beta right now uh, when it first came out. Well, we're right in the middle of it now, right now. But when we did it when it first came out, I think we just, you know, it was almost hard to even get a couple hits off. But um, it, it is good. They do scale the, the sort of areas and the monsters to, to how you're going. Like, for example, if you're doing, you know, if you've got a lot of players nearby, they're going to give you more enemies and make it tough for you. So it's always going to appropriate to your level. So if, you, if you're just by yourself or with another friend, they're not going to make it too hard for you. Oh my goodness, what's this? And here we go. Here's the big boss. So this stuff's you pretty full. the size of that hammer, you could squash all of us. We've got a couple... <laughs> Got a couple targets here. Everyone's sort of attacking the base here. Seeing as their melee weapons don't really want to reach up that far. Are you able to throw your axes yet, Oriel? Yeah, I can pick up axes. Oh, throw. I just. Oh, oh okay. down. Need some help. Oh no. Oh no, this is a bit tragic. So, what, what's happening at the moment? Like, right now we're in a, in a down state, so we get we a separate skip set of skills where we try to. um rally yourself like I did just there so you want to either try and kill an enemy or get a friend to come and help you um, or alternatively I believe you can just uh, uh, try and fight your way or heal your way out of it so this guy down here is having a bit of trouble give him a helping hand meanwhile he's throwing rocks I believe oh we did it we got through and we took him down there he goes <laughs> it does look pretty menacing but you know it's not, not the hardest to beat I believe that was sort of the, the ancient king that, that turned everyone into ghosts or something like that or, or some some effigy of him. So yeah, that was um that was the sort of starting area. Um you'll notice after this loading screen we get projected into the main area. A little bit of a quick cutscene here. Oh, and you get you get a reward for that. You get to yeah. Choose. You get to choose uh, you know, a little weapon uh I'm gonna take the shield, I, I believe. Anyway, don't want to make this video too long. Um, that was uh, our sort of char nice. starting area commentary. That was good. Yeah. Enjoyed that. So um, please leave us a bit of feedback in the comments. And as always, stay tuned.